Hello friends, welcome. In this lecture, we'll be understanding the payroll and payroll structure in Tally ERP-9. So the payroll feature in Tally is fully integrated with accounting to streamline payroll processing. We can post any kind of entry related to our employees and their salaries in Tally. So now we'll understand the setup in payroll. Organization can set up and process payroll using simple, simple criteria. A collection of predefined processes can enable error-free automation of process payroll in Tally. So for that, what we have to do, first of all, we have to understand the system of payroll. System of payroll involves everything that has to do with the payment of employees. For example, we have to pay them the wages, the taxes, or we have to make some deductions like that. So each and every transaction related to the employees or their employment taxes can be fulfilled in tally with the payroll system. This basically includes keep, keep track of their working hours, their wages, their taxes, and other deductions. And also we can print their pay slips their pay, payroll reports etc from payroll system of tally now coming to the earnings of employees first of all we have basic salary of employees so what is basic salary it is the amount base amount that any employer paid to its employee before any extras extras what do you mean by extras extras here are their overtime wages that added to their basic salary See, overtime wages are only applicable to the workers, those who are working on machineries. As we pay wages to the workers, those who are working on machinery or making the process of production at the final level. So overtime wages is the amount payable to the worker for the extra time spent by the worker to do the work, extra work. Now, what is meant by the dearness allowance? It is also included and added to the basic salary of any employee and is calculated on the base of basic salary to mitigate the impact of inflation, like to mitigate or to eradicate the impact of the prices rises in India. So now the next earning for employees is house rent allowance. This also get added to the basic salary of any employee as this is an allowance paid by employers as a compensation for their rent, like for which they pay the re their rent for residing at their homes in the city where their workplace is located. So for that, the employer provides HRA, that is house rent allowance to their employees. Now the next is the traveling allowance. Sometimes the employer gives the benefit to its employees for traveling allowances as well. That is, they are intended to cover the cost of all the journeys within the sphere of their duty. They bear their traveling costs, their to and fro charges. So that comes under the traveling allowance. Now, Irrespective of the earnings from em for employers, employees, we have some deductions from the salary as well. First, there is a provident fund. For this, it's for the purpose to provide employees with lump sum payment at the time of exit from their place of employment. First of all, employer deducts this provident fund from the salary and in lump sum amount pays to the employee at the time of the employ uh, exit from their place of employment. Now, what is professional tax? It is the tax that is levied and collected by the government and it is just as indirect tax, a person earning an income from salary or anyone practicing a profession such as the CA, CS, lawyer, doctors, and so on are required to pay this professional tax. This tax will be deducted from their salary as a deduction. Now, the next deduction we have is employer statutory contribution. 
see in this contribution a total 12% of pf is deducted from the salary of an employee and the same amount is contributed by the employer also but in the employer's contribution employer contributes to pf 3.67% of its earned basic salary and 8.33% to epf of the employee's earned basic salary so in this way employer contributes total amount of 12% to the salary of employee but right now it is deducted and after that they can take the benefit now the next let's understand this with the help of an example now first of all we have an employee with the company and their basic pays are given here see we have four employees like Daniel and Preeti goes under the group of staff that they may be the finance staff or any other staff and Joseph and Sukriti are the worker they are the laborers in our factory that they are helping in our production so we have kept their basic salary over here like Daniel is hired as a staff for 10400 salary per month similar way Preeti is hired for 6500 Joseph as a worker for 2080 rupees Sukriti for 3900 rupees so we take their basic salary in the monthly salary in this way now as we come forward the salary or the basic pay of an employee is calculated on the basic of months they are present but we'll take the base of the month of 26 days in spite of 30 days so for example if the basic salary is 6500 per month and the employee's attendance is 24 days that the employee is present for 24 days out of 26 days then his basic pay will be the basic salary per day and the attendance is 6500 divided by 26 days and multiplied by 24 days why we are taking the total amount of basic salary we are calculating the uh, the, the salary for a one day that is dividing by 26 and then we are multiplying by 24 days to calculate it, to calculate the salary of the present days so it comes to 6000 rupees here the monthly salary of these four employees are given and the days they worked in the company is also mentioned here like joseph is present of for 25 days daniel has not taken any leave preeti has taken two leaves sukriti has taken one leave so as per the work they earn the basic salary on the basis of this formula now we have reached to our earned basic salary now the next point that comes here is the overtime wages so as i told you overtime wages are applied for the workers only so here for that we had calculated the overtime rate that is provided by the company is 20 rupees per hour so here the overtime rate is given for joseph 20 rupees per hour and sukriti 37.50 rupees per hour so how much they have worked for overtime Joseph worked for 20 hours and besides their basic hours of employment and Sukriti provided 10 hours of extra employment services to the factory or to the company so on the basis of their overtime rate and the hours they worked overtime hours they worked we had calculated their overtime extra amount earned so after that we have calculated our earned basic salary and overtime amount as well and this will get added in the earned basic salary now the next that comes is dns allowance it is calculated on earned basic salary so we are taking it as earned basic salary if it is less than 5000 rupees then the da is 20% of 5 of that earned basic salary and if it is equal or get greater than 5000 then the da will be provided on the basis of 10% of their earned basic salary so over here 
if the salary is below 5000 rupees then the earned da will comes to 400 rupees that is 20% of their earned basic salary and if the da uh, the earned basic salary is more than 5000 rupees then the da is calculated for 10% of their on basic salary and likewise we are calculating the d amount for preeti and sukriti as well now moving forward we are coming here to the house rent allowance where house rent allowance is calculated on the basis of their earned basic salary and the dns allowance so hra will be calculated as the 30% of the earned basic salary plus drns d dns allowance so here what we'll do we'll first of all add 2400 rupees together and then we'll calculate the 30% of this amount that is 2400 so we'll reach to the value of 720 and like this we have calculated for danial preeti and sukriti as well now moving forward we are here with the traveling allowance in which we had calculated the traveling allowance on a fixed amount basis that a company can give a fixed amount of traveling allowance to, to his employees or a fixed percentage can also be set by the company as we had said in the case of DNS and HRA. So this will also get added to the basic salary. Now there are some incentives as well that is available for workers they are not fixed for those workers that is variable and is totally dependent on the employer so it's his choice that he'll provide the incentive as a bonus or not so the company here is providing the incentive to its to its workers joseph and sukriti so the company is providing joseph 100 rupees and sukriti 500 rupees so after adding this incentive traveling alliance hra da and overtime amount earned we reach to the total earning of the employees so this will comes to 3920 for joseph when we add earn basic salary overtime amount dns allowance hra traveling alliance and incentive so in this way we reach to our total earnings of each and every employee now this is all about the earnings of employees but after earnings there are some deductions as well from the employee salary the first deduction that we had discussed is provident fund so this is calculated on the basis of the earned basic salary if the earned basic salary is less than 6500 so here this is less than 6500 then the pf will be calculated 12 percent of the earned basic salary so the 12 percent will be calculated on 2000 rupees and your pf amount will become 240 rupees like this if your earned basic salary is greater than 6500 rupees then your pf will be 780 rupees now moving forward we have one another kind of deduction that is professional tax so professional tax will be calculated on the basis of your total earnings so here this is these are your total earnings and the professional tax will be zero if your total earnings are less than 5000 rupees so i had written here zero as a professional tax there will be no deduction in the name of professional tax if your total earnings are less than 5000 and it is 175 rupees if your total earnings will vary between 5001 rupees to 10000 rupees so here in the case of preeti and sukriti these earnings belongs to the range of 5001 and 10000 so i had written or taken here the professional tax of rupees 175 and the professional tax is 200 or 300 rupees if your total earnings are greater than 10000 rupees so this professional tax deducted by the employer is deposited in the bank so now we have understood about the earnings and the deductions of an employee salary now we have came to our net salary that is total earnings earned by the employee minus provident fund and we'll deduct professional tax so we'll reach 
to the net salary as here it is shown so this is all about the payroll structure and the calculation of the net salary in the next lecture we will be discussing about the payroll structure in tally and we'll create some masters in tally